guys, welcome back to another episode of The Whiskey Diaries. My name is Matt Lang and today we're going to do a very special episode uh, reviewing five whiskies under $1,000 for 30 year old. Uh, this is a very special edition obviously because 30 year olds are quite special whiskies and uh, the reason why we're doing this is because we highly recommend or I highly recommend to always have a 30 year old whiskey in your house. Uh, for special editions, for that special customer or a special guest that you will have in your house, uh, it's, always have to, it's always good to have a 30 year old. And some 30 year olds can go up to like $5,000 twenty thousand dollars and so on and so on so to have a, an, a, an, an affordable 30 year old whiskey in your house is, is pretty essential in my my belief and under a thousand dollars for 30 year old whiskeys these distilleries are actually incredible uh, the first one that we're going to analyze today is going to be the Talisker 30 year old uh, we did a specially dedicated video to this one so you can see the full review there but basically the gist of it is a it's a classic Talisker uh, in the island the Island of Skye. Uh, it's a 30 year old, all in uh, ex bourbon barrels. Uh, uh, the, the ABV is 45.8. Uh, percent so that's quite high for a 30 year old uh, and it's basically just a classic classic uh, talisker you get like the iodine you get the smoke uh, you get the saltiness so if you look if you like that um, that sort of maritime uh, type of whiskey uh, this is this is absolutely stunning and it says for I think it's seven hundred and fifty dollars or something like that so it's actually quite cheap and affordable for a 30 year old again this is something that I mentioned in other reviews when we were talking about 30 year old whiskies is 30 year old right now is in 1990 you know what I mean it's just like 30 year old you think oh 30 year old in a whiskey blah 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 but if you look at what the, in the 1990s when this whiskey was being distilled like so many things didn't even happen yet so it's just it's incredible how much history there can be in a single bottle. So that's the 30 year old. Uh, you can have a look at there. Uh, as you can see, it's a pretty light for a 30 year old. Uh, obviously, that shows the American oak influence. Uh, so I'm going to just replace it so you can see as well. So the next one that we're going to talk about is the Glenfarkas 30 year old. There will be a video dedicated to this one as well, so you can have a look. 43% ABV, Glen Farkless is a distillery that specializes in sherry casks. We have done a review on Glen Farkless in general, so uh, make sure that you watch the video if you want a lot more information. But basically, they just focus on second field, uh, big, big bats of sherry. They do their family casks as well, uh, which each year they do a special year. So like the, it's kind of like a vintage whiskey. So like 1972, 1992, 1993, and so on and so on. Some of those goes for really, really a lot of money. They're very collector's act items. Uh, we reviewed the one that is 1992 and it was a delicious whiskey. Uh, if you want to think about something, this is for the price as well. This is actually cheaper than the Talisker. It goes for 500 bucks or something like that. Uh, and it's delicious to have. It's really good it's a little bit more softer uh, you don't have like compared to a McCallum that they do sherry cask the 30 year old the Glen Farkless 30 year old is actually a little bit more softer it doesn't have that many tannins but it's still delicious as in a really really good whiskey to have home and for the price you just can't go wrong there we go all Glen Farkless as well they're all unchilled filtered uh, so natural color um, so great great whiskies to have the next one so the next one is going to be the Ben Ryak number 30 year old. Ben Ryak is a very, very small distillery. Uh, they basically opened, uh, so it was opened by John Duff. We did a review. John Duff was the one who opened um, uh, Longmore back in the day. Uh, and then it got sold out to the, uh, to the grants as well. So for a long time, Ben Ryak was actually making, was being used for uh, blended whiskies and then eventually in the early 2000s you start uh, making their own bottle. Uh, this one as well, this goes for about $800. It's a really, really, um, what do you call it, underdog whiskey, uh, Ben Ryak. And this one is 30 year old pitted whiskey. So it means that obviously they add some pit to it. Um, there is a natural color, non-chin filtered, and this one is I had, uh, bottled at a 46% ABV, so quite quite high ABV as well for a 30 year old. Um, we haven't done a review on this one yet, but we will. Um, but again, highly recommended, uh, great distillery as well. There we go, that's the 30 year old. There we go, back. 
Now the next one that we're going to talk about, and this is actually, I got it, I got lucky with this one, is the Glenfiddich 30 year old. We did a review uh, already on this one, so you can find the full, the full details of it. Uh, Glenfiddich 30 year old, um, basically I found it on Dan Murphy's on a deal for $800. It usually sells for about 1000 so it's just hitting that mark. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful whiskey and really, really showcase what Glenfiddich can do. Again, Glenfiddich is a small distillery uh, in the middle of Dufftown. Uh, it's owned, family owned by William Grants. And they produce a very soft, very easy drinking. Uh, Glenfiddich single handedly in the 80s basically made single malt survive by the marketing campaigns. In the 80s, basically, Glenfiddich was the only single malt that you can possibly get that was really, 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 really good. Uh, and they, they stuck to their guns and they kept making whiskey no matter what uh, what happened. And everybody knows that in the 80s, the, bubble, the whiskey bubble burst. Uh, so a lot of distilleries weren't broke back then, but Glenfiddich kept doing and kept expanding and kept making whiskey. So the 30 year old is individually bottled. Uh, this is bottle number 48. Uh, sorry, uh, this is cast selection uh, 48, and the bottle is 10,456. Um, they obviously they produce a few a few bottles of this one, but this is a great great whiskey to have at home because it's not even though it's a really soft whiskey, it's still really complex, but at the same time it's not in, uh, it's, it's not too invasive. It's actually really really delicious, so you can really sip on it and just have a really good chat with someone without having to think too much of what you're drinking, even though it's delicious um, yeah so if you want to know about more about this one in particular as well just watch one of our videos we'll, we'll have a, a, a pretty extensive uh, information on that one and the one that we're going to try today after I put this back is a tomatin 30 year old so this one I actually never tried I'm pretty keen to try it myself uh, tomatin we did a review on tomatin um, uh, 18 year old in a previous video um, and it's a great distillery that produces a very fruity, it's very famous for producing a, a fruity, uh, fruity sort of whiskey. Um, and uh, the 30 year old is aged 100% in American oak. Um, so the interesting fact about Tomatin that we mentioned in the previous uh, video as well is the fact that it's, a, it's owned by a Japanese distillery. Um, this happened uh, in the uh, around 1990s, and the reason why this happened is again the, a lot of distilleries in the late 80s as well uh, went broke because of the whiskey barrel burst. So this got taken over uh, a Japanese uh, company, and what they've been doing lately because Tomatin in the beginning they were actually producing the whiskey for a lot of the blends, and just basically 80% of the whiskey was going to blends. Um, when the Japanese uh, whiskey this uh, company took it over, they are starting uh, producing a lot more for the single malts and it's starting to take a lot more pride in just more quality instead of quantity. So now Tomatin in the last 10 years have uh, gathered a really good following and a lot of respect in the community uh, and this 30 year old is supposed to be delicious. Now again 46% ABV, non chill filtered uh, and this is batch number two. Um, so great great little distillery as well uh, six stills um, and yeah there it goes the collar is actually quite light for a 30 year old so obviously that show, shows the the American uh, the American oak influence there it goes as you can see the collar is almost like transparent which is really interesting yeah, that's delicious just super soft there's a little bit of chocolate on the nose Yeah, ooh, that's um, that's a very interesting thirty year old. It's um, it's actually quite harsh on the back, but not harsh in the bad way. But like has a, like a lot of character. Uh, but then you can you can definitely taste the fruit and the fruitiness and the and the uh, lightness of the character of tomato. So this is it, guys. This is five whiskies, five thirty year old whiskies under one thousand dollars that everybody should have. Hopefully you enjoy it, and we'll see you next time. Slangeva.